14 and uh, going to really go for it tonight going for gold um, so Matthew did 13 and 14 tonight we're going to do verse 15 through to verse 23 to the end of that uh, to the end of that chapter Bradley would you mind reading that please but if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest thou not charitably. Destroy not him with thy meat, for whom Christ died. Let not then your good be evil spoken of. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he that is in these things serve of Christ, is acceptable to God and approved of men. Let us therefore follow after things which make for peace, and things wherewith one may edify one another. For meat destroying not the work of God, all things indeed are pure, but it is evil for that man who eateth with offence. It is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak. Hast thou faith? Have it to thyself, to thy self before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. And he that doubteth is damned, if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For what sort of is not of faith is sin. Yeah. So um, this is the culmination of really of what um, Paul's been teaching or has been writing to the church at Rome, um, and we've been been looking at it for quite a while now. Eating, drinking, is it important? Um, you know, what if there's something that that my conscience allows, but there's a weaker brother or a weaker sister in Christ, and and they think it's wrong? You know, do do I just plow ahead and say, well, I know it's right, you know, therefore I'm just going to do it? And Paul has made quite, I think, quite a complex argument. He he, he has addressed it and readdressed it and reaffirmed what he's saying, verse after verse, really. And so now we're coming to, uh, I wanted to do verses 15 to the end because I think it really does, uh, he puts it in the most explicit terms, I think, uh, that, that he can do. And so we're going to go through that. I'm not going to go through it uh, verse by verse, really, in the order that it's written, but I am going to do most of the verses. I'm going to pick up on the subjects rather and so we may be kind of jumping back and forth in in the chapter but we will deal with pretty much i think all the verses there um so verse 15 is uh, a very a very interesting verse because it makes some statements that i think are very simple and and just obvious from it and so um i'll just read it to you it says but if thy brother uh, be grieved or, or be distressed with thy meat. In other words, if your if your brother or sister in Christ is is distressed by the food that you are eating, the, and in this case it's meat. Um, now walkest thou not charitably? Uh, in other words, you are you are not walking in love. Uh, uh, destroy not him with thy meat that is don't destroy your brother with what you're doing for whom Christ died so there are I think four points that are very clear from that one verse number one even doing something against which there is no clear scripture and about which your conscience is not troubled can actually cause grief to another believer in Christ number two if you do this knowing that it is causing grief, then you are not acting in love. And I would go so far as to say, you know, James 4.17, where it talks about he mm. who, who knows the right thing to do and does not do it, to him it is sin. So even though, you know, by doing that for yourself and for your own conscience is not sin, doing it in a way in which you disregard your brother uh, then, it, then it, it could be sin to you because you're not acting out of love. Um, the, the third point 
is that even the act of something simple uh, such as uh, eating can destroy a brother in Christ um, and for uh, to me it is obviously teaching that those for whom Christ uh, died because that's what it says maybe can be destroyed um, so, so that's just four uh, fairly uh, basic points that we could we can get from um, from verse 15 now um, I'm going to skip down to verse 20 now and you'll see the word uh, destroy there again um, it is a different um, Greek word um, verse 20 is kataluo uh, which means uh, literally to unbuild there's a kind of funny way of putting it but I think that's the clearest what it's saying to unbuild in other words to to disassemble uh, to dissolve uh, to 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 take down or to overthrow that which had been built uh, and so what what he's saying here is the, the, the summary of this so far is that if you are obstinately insisting on your own opinions about doubtful things, remember Matthew emphasised that these, this is not about salvation, it's not about you know grace or faith, it's about doubtful things, it's about things that there are different opinions of within, within uh, Christianity, within Orthodox Christianity. If you are obstinately insisting that your opinions are are valid and somebody else is not specifically here to do with meat and drink then the work of god is hindered and in fact uh, it, it, it's suggesting that you're starting to take down by those actions in in the life of a weaker brother or sister you may actually start to to uh, what was the phrase on Un, the word unbuild you're starting to unbuild what God has built in, in in the the life of that believer it's having an effect upon them you're destroying them you 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 may be destroying the faith the love the peace of that weaker brother for the sake of food or drink that, that's welcome uh, you're destroying uh, uh, what God has has built and what has been edified in that weaker brother and sister just for the sake of uh, food or drink. Verse 19 uh, uh, says this, Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. So now we're looking at the exact opposite, aren't we? So uh, uh, what Paul is saying is rather than follow after those things those opinions that you think are so right uh, that are actually destroying a weaker brother or sister rather than unbuild uh, what what uh, has been built in their life you need to edify them you need we need to edify one another the word edify comes uh, the english word is where we get our word edifice from an edifice is a building something that's been built up so rather than unbuild or disassemble or or, or, or throw down what has been built we are to edify one another uh, in order to do that we, we, we cannot be insistent about matters that are doubtful you know uh, uh, we, we, we must not be opinionated about those things which are doubtful um, so, so we are not to pursue things that are going to divide now the, there is a sense in which all scripture at some point will will divide you know i'm not suggesting that we just all try and get along together and we never have have disagreements or anything like that because there's some things it's right to disagree about there are fundamental things you know jude uh, uh talks about uh, uh contending earnestly for the faith which was once delivered to the saints you know we must contend earnestly for those things that are uh, must be protected and must be held on to but there are other things that we don't want to divide over um, we don't want to become have a have a a sort of partisan 
attitude, you know, well, I'm in this camp and, and you're not in my camp. Let's go to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. It's a well-known one, but it, it illustrates the, what I'm saying. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3 and um, verse 3. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? What's he saying? You're fleshly. If, if you're saying, well, I'm of this teacher, oh, well, I'm of that teacher, oh, I can't have anything to do with, with what you're saying, you know, I, I, I've got my teacher and I follow him. No, Paul's saying, are, are you not carnal? If you have this, what uh, 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 some have called a party spirit, Meaning, you know, uh, like, like, you know, you get different political parties and they're forever, you know, uh, 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 running the other one down and, and they're, they're, they're saying how great they are and what, what they promised to do and how everybody else has, has, has wrecked the country. You know, we don't want that in the church. You know, well, my, my theology is the best and your theology is the worst. You know, no, we, we don't divide over, we can discuss them, but they don't become a source of um of great division um so back to romans 14 um verse 21 it is good neither to eat flesh nor to drink wine nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth or is offended or is made weak so good it's good not to eat meat not to drink wine even though these things actually are not sin in themselves you know but Paul is not saying don't do these because they're sin you know he's saying it's good not to do these things why it's good not to do them if they cause someone to stumble if they cause someone uh, uh, to be to be offended um, so, in other words, causing your brother to stumble is more important uh, to God, more important to God than whether, you know, you, you think these things should be allowed or, or not allowed. He's saying, no, the, the emphasis, the, the principle here is how can I keep my brother or sister in Christ walking in faith, walking in the spirit? How can I build them up? How can I edify them? How can I uh, sort of uh, sort of uh, galvanize their, their walk in Christ where it's going to be strong? It's going to encourage them. And am, am, by being uh, obstinate in my opinions, am I actually affecting them? Am I actually causing them to become discouraged or distressed or, or, or weakened, even weaker than they are? And that's a really important thing to think. And I think this is what Paul's been saying of this whole last chapter and everything, why he's made, because you, you go through it and you think, well, when's he going to stop talking about meat and drink? You know, because it's just like verse after verse. What he's saying is it's not about meat or drink. It's about discouraging that brother or sister in Christ. It's about actually by being stubborn in your opinions, you may be causing them to fall. You may, in fact, as we read at the beginning, destroy that believer for whom Christ died. That's heavy stuff, isn't it? So, so it's not about eating or drinking. It's about, am I encouraging or am I being a stumbling block to this person for whom Christ died? Are my actions going to actually destroy them? So here Paul is, is identifying what real biblical Christianity is. Uh, is and uh, uh, it's not about eating it's not about certain foods it's not about drinking or, 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 or not drinking um, it, that there are there are principles that really um, undergird 
those actions. And, and the verse that I think really just holds it all together, uh, where Paul uh, just nails his colours to the mast, is verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Um, yeah, it, it, it's a really important verse, isn't it? Um, because this is talking about, this is what the kingdom of God is. It's not about outward observances. It's not whether one does something or doesn't do something uh, you know, or oh, well, I, you know, I, 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 I'm a vegetarian now, or I'm a, you know, it's, it's not about that, but it's actually about those things, those gifts that come from God to the heart of the believer. Um, it's about the righteousness of God, imputed through faith, imparted by His Spirit. Uh, now, this is not something that is earned by outward acts. But it is given to us by God. Let's just have a look at that Revelation chapter 19. Um, verse 8, uh, talking about the uh, church as, as the bride of Christ or the bride of the Lamb. And it says, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints or the righteousness of the saints. So to her, it was granted to her. It was given by who? By God. So again, that righteousness is not earned by our good deeds, but it is given by God. It's the, through the grace of God. Uh, uh, so it's about righteousness. It's about peace. There's a peace with God and a peace with our own conscience, isn't there? When we become a Christian, uh, uh, what one preacher used to say that it's uh, there is a controversy that rages between you and God. And when you become a Christian, that controversy ends. You know, you've made your peace with God through Christ. And so there is that, that righteousness that we have uh, with God because, um, because the fact that we are in Christ and Christ is in us. Uh, and also he that is righteous doeth righteousness, John says. Mm. Uh, so uh, the Christian is not troubled then by, by his conscience nor is he in conflict with, with God. Uh, Philippians 4, uh, verse 7, set, talks about the peace of God, which passeth all understanding. So again, the peace is not coming from what's happening in your, your life and what's around you, but the peace has come from God and, and is now in you. Uh, you know, we look to God for that peace. He has given it uh, and... and, and and he is the source of all that peace. Also, uh, there is joy in the Holy Ghost. Just go to First Peter. First um, Peter one. Um, Yes, First Peter 1, verse 7, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honour and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love, in whom though now ye see him not, yet believing ye rejoice with joy unspeakable, and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. So it's a joy unspeakable. Uh, again, it's a joy that even though you're going through a trial 
of your faith, you can still experience that joy because it doesn't come from anything external that you're doing. This is the emphasis all the way through. Paul's been talking about things that we do, outward acts, outward observances. But he's saying that isn't the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God comes from uh, Christ being in you and you being in Christ. And then the benefits of that union, which are righteousness, peace and uh and joy so um actually there's a verse that i want to touch on there in romans 14 because i think it can be a bit confusing um, <coughs> in the king james uh and it's and it's verse 20 so the king james renders it for meat destroy not the work of God. It sort of sounds like it's saying meat or food doesn't destroy the work of God. That's not what it's saying. What it's saying is for meat, in other words, for the sake of food, do not destroy the work of God. You understand that? So, so that's, the, that's the whole, if you misunderstand that, I think it becomes a very confusing passage. So that's what he's saying is, you know, for the sake of you eating meat or whatever it is that you think it you you're convinced it's okay and your conscience is clear he's saying don't destroy the work of god don't unbuild what god has done in the life of a of a weaker brother just for the sake of being obstinate and being opinionated and saying i know i'm i know i'm right and i can prove it from the scriptures because paul is saying that's not you're not walking charitably you're not walking in love therefore you've missed the whole point of uh, of 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 walking in the spirit and and you know expressing that love one to another you're not expressing love you you you're doing the exact opposite so verse 22 um hast thou faith have it to thyself before god happy is he that condemneth not himself and the thing which he allows so yeah you're convinced great bon appetit go and eat your meat uh but have it to thyself. Keep it to yourself. Is what he's saying. Yeah. You know, if you're if you're happy doing that, fine. Do it to yourself. But don't do it in front of the weaker brother or sister. You know it's going to offend. Um, and then uh, and then finally he 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 gives the reason. Uh, he he that doubteth is damned. That is, he is judged if he eat. Because he eateth not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. In other words, if a believer thinks that something is unlawful, if they genuinely believe, uh, even if it's out of ignorance, that that is against God's law, uh, or even if they are doubtful, in other words, they might not be absolutely convinced that it's against God's law, but there might be doubts in the mind, there might be significant enough doubts, then if that person eats that food, drinks that drink, does that act, then they are sinning because their conscience is condemning them. And so they're doing something that they believe is actually wrong. Even if you set tell them, oh, no, it's right, you know, go ahead and do it. This is what I say, things like, Occasionally you meet people, uh, uh, women who uh, who cover their heads, you know, they, they want to cover their head because they believe that's what the scripture teaches. Uh, fine. You know, I say, then cover your head. But don't go around telling everybody else they need to cover their heads. You know, but the thing is, it would be wrong to say to that person, <coughs> oh, no, we're not that kind of church. You know, we don't women don't cover their heads in this church. Therefore, you ought not to. Because you could be persuading them to do something that they 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 uh, you know they doubt they doubt that it's that it's right. Well, then to them it is sin. So it's interesting, isn't it? How you know uh, uh, some things are specifically sinful. The, the Bible speaks of them: adultery, stealing, lying, fornication, and so on. Uh, clearly, are sin, and that's not a matter of you can't say, "Oh well, I." I, my conscience is troubled by those things because they are explicitly stated in Scripture. There's no, there's no discussion about that. But there are other things that are doubtful things that in 
within Orthodox Christianity, there are different views about it. It is wrong for you to insist that everybody else follows your example, you know, uh, uh, and particularly it is wrong if someone is convinced that that thing is in, for you to say to them, no, you know, go and do it, go and do it, because you could be encouraging them uh, to commit sin. You could be unbuilding uh, all the work or the peace and, and the joy that person has in Christ because you're bringing in this attack on their conscience uh, and the end result is you could destroy that believer in Christ you believe that you can destroy that one for whom Christ died